I don't really understand it because it's so great. Like Lori said, why could it be so good, you know? That he called me and Esther and just uh, just to talk. Yeah. Well, see, he's, oh, see, he, you know, he comes, excuse me. He's kind of shy and backward, always was. But see, the Lord helped him to love you all and encourage yes. you. Yes, he has done so. God's laid on his heart and that helped you each time. Yes. You know, it, he doesn't come just to go white water rafting. Oh, no. He comes to love us. Yeah, right. And uh, there's a lot more in it than boats and splashes and yeah. all those things. Yeah. There's a lot greater. And, and I believe it's, I don't know, it's when he's come, the two times he's come and others that have come with him, it's, it's been, I felt, very significant. Crucial. For me and for the dear ones in my congregation. I remember when the Lord revealed to me your calling. Yes, I remember. I said, son John, we're going to Leo. This precious daughter is about 10 years old. And when we arrived, I was so weary. I, could, I said, John, you drive. And I would lie down in the back seat. And when we pulled in the barn lot there, I'll tell you, this child ran out there and she, I, I couldn't hardly get out of the car. She was right in there loving me. Oh, she's so delighted to see me. Oh, was it precious? It was. Because she just loved the Lord with all of her heart. Best she knew how. And she was esteeming us as his servant. And oh, what a wonderful time we had. The Holy Ghost came upon me and told me he was, he was a bearer of good news. He just mowed the yard. Isn't that amazing? I still remember that. Yes. That's been over ten years ago, hasn't it? 1973, June. That's over 13 years. Yes, sir. I was just out of high school, and I was scheduled to enter the University of Nebraska with a physics major, and it was called physics major astronomy option. I was going to be an astronomer. and uh, But I was restless. Somehow that didn't... I didn't feel that, feel right, and I didn't know what to do, and I, I entertained the thought of ministry. I thought this was really something, but whenever I thought of ministry, I thought of being a pastor, and somehow that didn't feel right either. Well, that wasn't my calling. And uh, so I just prayed there after the waiting on God. I, my life was turned around wonderfully at the waiting on God, and I was uh, mowing the lawn, we'd mowed it with the tractor, I was doing some touch-up work, and I was praying. I said, now Jesus, I, here I am, I'm just out of high school, and I'm about to go into college, it's a very significant time in my life, and I don't know what you want me to do. And also, I've been changed, you know, God, you've, I found out that I can walk with God like the men and the women of the Bible can. But yet, I don't know how to hear you very well, but I met a man who does. And so if you can tell him, and have him tell me, then I'll just trust you that what he tells me is from you. And then I, I prayed that, and I promptly forgot that I even prayed it. And uh, you came, this is before you arrived, that was this, that morning. Oh, that was mean, that. Uh, he had me there in the afternoon, and you would prayed that morning? Yes, I prayed. I'd never been there before. No, no. I marveled that you could find the place. I know it. It was, wasn't easy. I can't even pronounce the street names. They're just about six syllables, you know, or some language. But anyway, you came and you loved the people and you loved them. We had a great time. And I'd forgotten. I'd pray all about that. And then if you, as you were closing, or as you were about to leave, you went to love Brother Schultz, and then you went to love me. I didn't see it with my eyes, but I had a, an experience as I had my arms around you. I, either your heart was very large or I was very small, but I was just traveling through it. I was just traveling through it. Your heart, I was just going right through it, spiritually speaking. And what I was so shocked about is I didn't see anything in terms of you know, carnality, nothing. It was pure. I mean, there was nothing, nothing. I, I didn't know it could be that way, to that degree. I, I know, you know, that that the spirit continually works. But I mean, to the light that you had, I mean, there wasn't anything. It was all under the blood. It had been slain out, cleansed out, died out, obeyed out. And it was just 
I mean, I could just, I can, I can, I can see it in my mind's eye. I was just passing through, like as if it was a half of a mile wide, and I was just traveling through in a little car or something. And there was nothing there. It was empty. It was devoid of, of the carnal nature. And then I saw my heart. And that's when I really started bawling. My heart was filled, if I may be honest, my heart was filled with thorns and twists and priors. I saw that I was an angry person, a lustful, greedy, selfish, evil, despicable person. I was crying. I could see that, see? And right then he said, You're, he's going to be an evangelist. That's what, that's what God told me to tell him. Well, before that, before that, you said, Oh, Lord, break the bonds, the chains. Oh, he said, oh, the chains. Oh, yeah. Break the chains that are binding this heart in. Yes. Well, you know, I was new at this, but I tell you, that sounded good to me. <laughs> Considering what I was going through, I tell you, that was music to my ears. Break the chains. Because I, I was bound in my heart. You know, you can ask my father here, Reimar. Uh, well, he, he just confessed to me years later, the next couple of years after I called him, he couldn't see how I was going to be an evangelist. We'd go door to door witnessing, and he, Reimar, would talk and witness, and I'd sweat. <laughs> I mean, I would sweat. I, there's a certain if you get so a certain there's a certain way, you know, you can perspire if you're so if you're really afraid. And I was, I was. He, I mean, we just went knocking on doors, and he'd tell them about Jesus, and then it really terrorized me. One one day, he said, "Well, maybe someday you can talk." You know, and I, oh, I just didn't, I didn't, I just swallowed and trusted God to never send a day. <laughs> but, but, but if he asked me what I was going to do, I'd say, oh, I'm going to be an evangelist. <laughs> Please, I'm going to be an evangelist. Because when Brother Helms, when you said it, when you well, said my heart like he's going owl. to be an evangelist, I'll tell you, it clicked in my it, heart. Listen, that's a hit in my heart like an I owl. mean, it clicked in my heart. And I said, if you recall, I said, I knew it. I knew it. Oh. I mean, in my mind, I was saying, well, I knew that. And then, of course, my prayer came. And then I realized that I didn't know it. And the analogy that I use is as if something, somebody had something on the tip of their tongue and couldn't quite get it out. You know, all this time, you know, God's trying to... I could see that it wasn't the pastor. I mean, I know I'm in a pastorate now, but I wasn't called to be a pastor, and it wasn't the university, it wasn't astronomy and all that. It was a different star, you know, the, the bright and morning, morning star. The, the star of good hope. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to follow that. Just study one star. Yeah, there's enough. There's enough. The morning star. Yeah, yeah. Just get under that star and tune in. And the day star has a real in the heart. God's word in and just look at it. Just follow it. But I just... I, I just knew as soon as he said it, I had the assurance within my heart. I was in late June of 1973, and by God's grace and Jesus' glory, that assurance has been constant every, all the way to today. That it didn't matter if I didn't know how to witness. It didn't matter if no. I didn't know how to lead a soul to Jesus. It didn't matter if I was terrorized. I had the witness. I had the assurance in my soul. I was called to be an evangelist. <laughs> I tell you, I mean, it's true. I mean, I, I tell people, I'm called to be an evangelist. You led any souls to Jesus? Oh, no. No. Are you kidding? I can't even witness. Well, I'm called to be an evangelist. I mean, that's how real it was, my friends, in my heart. It was that real. I'd go to college and people would wonder, do you ever doubt your calling? I'd say, no. Never. I wish there's times when it was rough, just to be honest with you, there were times I wished I wasn't called, but I couldn't because I knew it was true. I wish I could, you know, but I would have been a liar. See, I would have been a liar. I couldn't. The assurance was there. I couldn't escape from it. I couldn't get away from it. Whether I wanted it or not, I'm called to be an evangelist. Didn't even know what it meant. You know? I wasn't sure what it meant. I studied Kittle's Theological Dictionary of the New Testament trying to figure out what in the world an evangelist was. So, so, I mean, I could get it all the Greek, you know, but I mean, I want to get it down to where we live. You know, until Brother Helm called me regarding Fayetteville and coming to Fayetteville, and he just, I prayed because you talked to me. You said some other things, and it's, I didn't, couldn't remember it all, but you told me the day I went to Fayetteville. I said, that's what an evangelist oh. is, Robert, a bearer of good news. That's right. And in my mind, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Latch on. You know, 
I've been wondering all these years, you know. I mean, you know, you can study it scholarly and all that, but I mean in my heart. I need an assurance. That's really oh my God. I need it simple. I can study a book, you know, and all that, but I mean it's simple. Bear of good news. Now, that's more like that's I, great. I can relate to that. Right, so phrase it. No, that's, that's something I could do. A bit more helping me. Yeah. And not get all complicated about it. It's simple. <laughs> you. Try Amen. to encourage me. Hallelujah. Oh, try hey, to encourage myself. We've, we've taken quite a journey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to say, be sure ever hears this. Be sure, Brother oh. Edward, here's this. Yeah, yeah. Abraham. Yeah. Just, just you want to get this to him real quick. You know, when the tapes are ready. Yeah. Well, I just want Edward to hear this. Oh yeah. Because oh, I don't know what he'll do oh, he'll, when he hears uh, this. He'll get pretty happy. Praise the Lord. He'll get pretty happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'd go through times, you know. I mean, situations in the background and things with my family and stuff that. Uh, I, I know everybody goes through it, but I just want to say to Jesus' glory, there's times when the flesh in us wonders if anybody loves us. But in those darkest moments, I knew there was one man who loved me. Oh, yes, sir. Now, now I knew that people loved me. I mean, in my mind, in my reason. But I mean where it felt. There was one where the devil couldn't, by God's grace, the devil couldn't shake and threaten or lie to me about it. There was one man that loved me unconditionally. I mean, I know, I know, I know there are others that do that, but I, I was sure about one. You know, in terms of my personal inward struggle, you know, there was one that just, I mean, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I hit the bottom or on the top. It didn't matter. It was the same. Praise God. Like God's wonderful grace. There's one man God. I knew in the world, Lauren Helm, that, because well, he, well, see, the reason I knew he loved me is because I knew he loved everybody. Oh, <laughs> So that included me. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I didn't need him to tell me. I just believed him. I just knew that, well, I could tell God was with him and he was not a liar. And he said he loved everybody. Yes. If he, was, if he didn't, God couldn't anoint him. He'd be a liar. That's right. But he's not a liar. God's with him. I mean, God's working with my heart, you know. Yes. Tell you, you know, I went to that first waiting on God. <laughs> Brother Schultz, he tried to tell me what it was about and I... I tried to listen, but yet he knew, Brother Schultz already had wisdom, that you just you can try to tell him, but you can't ever tell him what a waiting on God's like. You just got to be there. That's on the way. You just got to be there. But he, he tried. He knew he, he, that words were inadequate, but, but yet that helped me to realize that I just had to be there. That's what he told me. You just have to be there to find out what it is. Don't go by so much what I say. So I'd go there and... And uh, we got there a little bit late, and you were, I didn't know who was who. It was just a bunch of people. We all were standing and you were, we were, I think you prayed for 30 or 45 minutes. And I didn't know if you, if you were Brother Helm or some other man, you know, because I didn't know anything. But it wasn't too long until I found out a little bit what was going on. And, and uh, you'd be, you'd just be praying for a while and praising the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, then you, we all sit down and, of course, you had your little mic on so we could hear what you were saying, and you were praying, saying, Jesus, now what? I don't know exactly what he said, but you've heard it so many times. What What would you have us to do? Or what is your will? Yes. Yes. Would it be preaching or testifying? I, you know, I, uh, what is, you know, I didn't ask a question. I thought, this is very unusual. Or is it singing? It's singing. Now, is it congreg It's congregational. You know, while he's doing this, my mind is saying, now, wait a minute, what's, what's going on here? If what looks like is happening is really happening, then the great big God of all eternity just told that man something. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty stirring when you think about it. I mean, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob just told that man on the platform, just talk to him. But it, it, the conclusion I reached, the way I think, is, well, he must be here. He must be in this room. I mean, God must be here. I mean, really here. You know, you've always heard that doctrine, he's everywhere. But I mean, he's really here. Really here. I mean, you know, he wants, I just sort of looked around. I didn't know what to do. I've never been in anything like this before. And in the meanwhile, he's going, is it the red hymnal or the black hymnal? It was in the black one. You know? It was in the black one. It was in the black Praise one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is it the red hymn or the black hymn? It's the black one. I thought, my goodness. And it, 
you know, I was watching and then just to see what he's going to do next. Is it in the first hundred, the second hundred, the third hundred? It was uh, the second hundred. Second hundred, thank you. Thank you, second hundred. You know, and it was 10, 10, 10, 20, whatever, 30, 40. You know, I pinpointed it. And then I just, do you want us to stand or sit? Stand. I said, well, you should all stand. Well, then right then, I, that's where I came in. I thought, I thought, now, Jesus, you just told him something. That now you told him something that involves all of us. Yes. So if I stand up, I mean, I was doing this a lot faster than I can tell you. If I stand up, then I'm going to be obeying God, and I'll know it. I mean, it's not just going to be a guess. I'll know it. Yes, well, I stood up. Yes. I, thought, I mean, I, you know, I know it's small, seemingly small things, but I tell you, anything's good. If God's in it, oh, yeah. I tell you, when you don't have anything with, you know, if you don't know anything of if God's in it or not, you'll take anything you can get. Standing or sitting, I tell That's you, right. I, thought, I mean, I could have, oh, pay God. Oh, I, could be, I mean, I could do what, I would actually know I was doing what God wanted me to do. Oh, and that's standing up. I mean, I didn't know, didn't know, I couldn't do much else. I could see now that I really didn't know much else about it, but I could at least stand up. That's right. And so I stood up. Boy, I tried to sing it, too, whether I knew it or not. Because, I mean, I, you know, I've been, it was, my mind would just be racing, and it was beginning, by God's grace, to work its way toward in the region of my heart that something great was going on. And, oh, we're in debt. Yes. We're in debt for this. Something in my heart was, it, so to speak, jumping up and down. And the phrase that went over in my mind is, this is the way they did it in the Bible. This is the way they did it in the Bible. This is the way they did it in the Bible. And I, I didn't know for a while until I re would review this maybe ten times or something, that when I was four years old, I would pray. I was at a, in the kitchen. I can remember it. I was in the kitchen. And uh, there was a lazy Susan and a... As a, I was four years old, so as a pastime, I'd spin it and watch the cans go by. But my meantime, my sister, Marilyn, would read me the Bible stories out of a Bible storybook. And being four years old, I couldn't distinguish much between the different Old or New Testament or who Jesus, Peter, Paul, they're just all good. You know, didn't Jesus, Peter, Paul, Elijah, Jonah, whatever, just, boy, they're all in there. I didn't know Jesus was over all of them. I just, whatever, they, whatever, I wanted to have it. I wanted that. I wanted that. See, whatever they had. I, and uh, I went through a little reasoning in my mind even then, because something came to me and says, well, you just want to be like the uh, great men of God, that, like this, or however I said it then, because you can do a great miracle. And I thought, well, you know, I was, that's pretty valid reason. You know, I mean, I acknowledge that, yeah, that, you know, make an axe head float on the water, turn water into wine, part the Red Sea, and, you know, but I realized somehow God helped me to see back then that that wasn't a very good motive. And so I, I thought it out and said, all right, all right, I thought I was really giving up something. So I want to be a man of God even if I don't do a miracle, even no miracle. I want, still want to be a man of God. You know, I mean, I thought I was giving something up. Then the voice or something in my mind said, well, you want to be a man of God because you'd be famous. Get your name in the Bible, you know, on TV or whatever, you know, or whatever, and get, get on these lists in Matthew chapter 1 and all that. And, uh, and I thought, well, you know, these guys are famous. And I thought, oh, that's good. And I thought, no, okay, all right. I, I, want, I want to be a man of God even if I'm not famous and I don't do a miracle. And then whoever was talking to me was saying, well, if you don't want to, in my mind, if you don't want to be famous, and you don't want to do a miracle, well, why do you want to be a man of God? And that stumped me for a little while. I knew I did, but I didn't know why. And I, I never fully came up with a complete answer other than one, one little incident out of the scriptures, and that was David. And... When he, this is what would come to my heart when I was pondering that question. When he would go to the Ark of the Covenant and he'd ask God something, God would answer him. In other words, when he talked to God, God would talk to him. That's the only thing I'd come up with. So I never forgot that. I grew up in the, in the church world and I didn't see that. And I saw that I began to see that and sort of ex begin perhaps to accept that the way church life was was not the way it was in the Bible and that we just couldn't have that anymore.
But nevertheless, in my heart, I still wanted it. I didn't know if it was possible, but I, I'd like it. Every once in a while, every so many years, that, would, that experience would float back into my memory, and I'd say, yes, I wish I could. But I could see after I reviewed and reviewed after the first waiting on God, I could see why something in my heart was saying, this is the way they did it in the Bible. Because God was, delight thyself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Yes. When I went to that waiting on God for the first time, I found out that if God can help that man, Lauren Helm, to walk with him, then he can help any man to walk with him. Yes. Because Lauren Helm is a human being, yes. and if God's grace and God's just, if God's grace helps him, God's grace is available to every man. To everyone. To help him to walk with God, that means me. Yes. And I tell you, that did something in my heart. It has changed me by God's grace forever. To try to realize that I can walk with God. To yes. be put hope in my yes. soul. Yes. That my childhood desire. Yes. My childhood desire was possible. It wasn't just an idle dream. It was real. God was saying, you can. Yes. You can. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll help you, you know. And, uh, and that's all, that's what this has all been about since then, in June of 73, is to learn to want to try to walk with God. And yes. Of course, we know the key is obedience. Obedience. Obedience is a great key. Yes. To yes. do God's will. Praise the Lord. That's so good. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That first time that I heard Robert pray, he was just a young man, and God had me to have him pray. I tell you, God ever helped him to pray. Clear beyond himself. Must have been around 12 years ago. 11 years ago. Oh, how the Lord helped that precious son to pray. What's the number that you're going to sing? I wasn't thinking about it. It's called The God of Abraham Praise. 